Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to my talk. So first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for the kind invitation. And uh, um, let me share the screen. So um, I will talk about uh, non-killer manifolds with vanishing first watcher in class. Um, so this, uh, as we will discuss, is a class of uh, comp complex manifolds which are not killer and which satisfy uh, some sort of Calabi-Yau condition. So if you want, uh, generally speaking, is a, is a talk about non-killer calabi manifolds. So I thought I'd show you the, oops, protagonists of the story, <laughs> at least the classical story, Calabi, Yao, and not Kaler. Um, so to start, let me, uh, let me go over some basic about the classical Calabi, Yao theory. Um, only a few aspects of it, of course. It's a huge subject um, on Kaler manifolds. So uh, X would be a complex n-dimensional compact Kaler manifold for now. And uh, um, it has a first chain class, which can be thought of either as the kind of topological first chain class of the holomorphic tangent bundle, T10, or up to a sign minus the first chain class of the canonical bundle as a, as a holomorphic line bundle. And uh, either way you construct it, certainly it lies in, in H2 with, let's say, real coefficients. Um, and uh, I will take for this talk this uh, possibly non standard definition of Calabiao, which is a compact killer manifold whose first chunk class vanishes in real cohomology in H2. So, um, this I call these Calabiaos because these are this, uh, I mean, as we'll see in a second, this is the, the, the class, precisely the class that will admit Ricci flat killer matrix. So, that's my reason. Um, in any case, uh, if you don't like this assumption here and you think it's too loose, um, the first remarkable result that one has, uh, which was proved independently in the 70s by Bogomolov, Fujiki, and Lieberman um, before the Calabi conjecture was settled, uh, they proved that if you have a Calabi manifold with this definition, so compare Kerr manifold, then the, with the first chunk class zero, then that's equivalent to the canonical bundle being torsion in the Picard group. So some positive tensor power of, X, of Kx is uh, isomorphic to the trivial line bundle Ox. So of course, one direction is trivial. <laughs> if you have this torsion condition, the friction class vanishes with real coefficients. And the hard part is to prove the opposite. So, so they have settled this. So if you don't like this condition here, you can instead think that it's a compare Killer manifold with torsion canonical bundle, and then uh, that's probably more familiar with more people. So, as I said, the fundamental theorem, then, uh, which was conjectured by Calabi in the 50s and proved by Yao in 76, is that uh, if you have a Calabi Yao manifold, which is always compact for me, so I won't repeat it, and the uh, uh, omega killer metric on X, then there is this a unique killer metric, say omega tilde, uh, on the same manifold such that um, the killer forms of omega tilde and omega are cohomologous. So by Kodaira, they actually differ by DD bar of some smooth real valued function phi. And the Ricci curvature of the new killer metric vanishes identically. So here, since it's scalar, uh, you can just think of this as the, the usual Riemannian Ricci curvature from Riemannian geometry. So um, this remarkable result shows that um, Calabio manifolds in fact are exactly the compact killer manifolds that admit uh, killer metrics with vanishing Ricci curvature. And uh, um, as is classically known, uh, when you have a killer metric, Ricci flatness, so the holonomy of a killer metric is contained in UN and Ricci flatness is equivalent to the restricted holonomy being contained in SUN. So you have a reduction of the holonomy from the general killer case, which is UN, to the special unitary group, SUN. And uh, um, without going into any details, uh, here is a small selection of what I call classical results about calabi -Yaus. Um So first of all, even before the calabi theorem, people were studying this rich matrix, killer matrix with zero Ricci curvature or maybe Ricci curvature with a sign. And uh, uh, the Bochner technique, 
can be applied. In particular, I think Lishnerovitz was the one who discovered that uh, holomorphic tensor fields on a Calabian manifold, of course, he was assuming Ricci flat Kähler, are parallel with respect to the, the churn connection of a Ricci flat metric. So here, a holomorphic tensor field means uh, a global section of, for example, the holomorphic tangent bundle or cotangent bundle, or their symmetric or, or uh, uh, skew powers, exterior powers, uh, which is holomorphic. So it's uh, annihilated by d bar. So holomorphic tensor field is automatically parallel with respect to the Ricci flat metric. Uh, as I will explain this Bochner argument later in a more general setting. And uh, uh, another consequence, which is usually called the Miyaoka yarn equality, although Miyaoka proved only a special case. Uh, so the general case is due to Yao. Uh, it, he proved that if you have a Calabian manifold, then if you take the second chunk class of X, which you can define as the second chunk class of the holomorphic tangent bundle, and you integrate, wedge it against the killer form to the power n minus two and integrate, this is any killer form you want, then the number you get is always non-negative on Calabi-Yau's. And furthermore, it's zero, if and only if your calabi is finally covered by a torus. So in other words, for a compact killer manifold to be finally covered by a torus, it's necessary and sufficient that the first and the second term class vanish. So you have this uh, neat characterization of tori up, up to covering, and this, uh, in general, this uh, inequality of me, okay, yeah. Okay, and uh, uh, so you have the inequality and, and the rigidity case. Um, next, in fact, much earlier, was this result of Kodaira and Spencer, essay plus epsilon. <laughs> so Kodaira Spencer proved that if you have a compact killer manifold and you take a small deformation of the complex structure, a concept that they defined, then these small deformations, sufficiently small deformations are still Kähler. And then plus epsilon, it's easy to observe that if, if the manifold is start is Calabi-Yau, these small deformations are also still Calabi-Yau. So you have somehow a, a stability or openness of this uh, Calabi-Yau condition when you deform the complex structure, which is nice. And this is nicely um, complemented, if you want, by the famous bogomolov tian todorov theorem, proved independently in this big range of years that uh, the small deformations of Calabi-Yau are in fact unobstructed. So uh, they are basically locally, they're parameterized by a, an open ball in H1 of the holomorphic tangent bundle. So a smooth manifold, although non-Hausdorff in general. Um, all right. And uh, uh, again, another result that was proved before, Yau's theorem, but assuming the Calabi conjecture, this was in fact in the famous paper where Calabi Post the conjecture uh, is the Calabi decomposition theorem. So as I said, it only became a theorem after Yao, if, namely that every Calabi Yao manifold has a, some finite etal, just means a usual unramified covering space, uh, which splits as the product of a torus, which could be a point, Q here can be zero, times another Calabi Yao with a vanishing first petty number. So this was proved by Calabi actually using the Bachner technique. So perhaps it should really be due to him in this context and uh, also uh, analyzing the structure of the Albanese map of uh, a Ricci flat killer manifold. Um, and I think in any case, Lichnerovitz was probably independent. So, and then uh, you have the a refinement of this, which was proved by Pogomolov and then later also Boville. Uh, so this can be refined. So the, the up to pass into finite cover, you have a torus factor. And then this factor here actually can be taken to be simply connected and itself splits as a product of pieces, which are um, either strict calabi which for us will just mean that the Ricci flat metric is holonomy equal to SU of the dimension of the factor and hyperkähler factors where the holonomy is equal to the special <coughs> quaternionic uh, unitary group SP of half the complex dimension of the factor. So there's a nice description of, of, of these three building blocks of calabi tori, strict calabi and hyperkähler, uh, modulo some products and then finite quotients. And uh, uh, of course, one then still needs to understand these factors, especially the, the strict calabi and hyperkähler. 
And the last um, classical result that I want to mention is a, a result of Kobayashi and Lübke, um, which is namely, if you have a, using again the Calabi conjecture, if you have a Calabian manifold, you obtain that the, the tangent bundle is, is stable or polystable with respect to any killer metric on X. So that means that it splits as a direct sum of, a, of a holomorphic vector bundles, which are stable in the sense of Mumford uh, geometric invariant theory. So this is, uh, if you want, the easy direction, so a special case of the easy direction of the famous donaldson ullenbeck yau theorem, which goes backwards uh, for constructing Permission young mids connection on stable vector bundles. Anyway, so you have these properties. And the, uh, the question, or the, the theme of this talk is what happens to these, these results or this theory when X is non scalar So uh, the Ricci curvature here, I will immediately tell you, is not going to be the Riemannian one that we had in the killer case, but it's going to be replaced by the first Chern form or Chern Ricci form. It's a classical object, in fact, already appears in the paper by Kehler. So if you have a, for now, I mean, I will assume compact throughout, but for many things it's not needed. Uh, if you have a Hermitian manifold, so omega now denotes a Hermitian matrix. So I don't assume that the omega is zero. You can still define locally uh, the, a Ricci form by locally taking minus IDD bar log of the determinant of the metric tensor, and uh, this, is a global object, is a closed real one one form. And it represents up to this two pi, the first chunk class of X that we had in the first slide in the usual cohomology. Furthermore, uh, if you have another Hermitian metric, the difference of the Ricci forms is dd bar by this formula log of the ratio of the determinants, which can be written intrinsically as the ratio of the volume forms. And the, the point is that the ratio of the volume forms or determinants is a global positive function. So this log here is a global smooth real valued function. In particular, you see that two, two Ricci forms are, are cohomologous in the RAM cohomology, but even more, they define the same class in this refined cohomology theory. So if you take the closed real one one forms, modulo IDD bar of smooth functions, everything with real coefficients, you obtain the so-called Bochern cohomology in degree one one, and by taking the, the class of the Ricci form of any Hermitian metric, again, divided by two pi, uh, you obtain the so-called first Bochern class or first Chern class in this Bochern cohomology here. And uh, uh, more generally, you can do this. Um, well, okay, first of all, this, there's a natural map from the Bochern cohomology to the usual, the Ram cohomology, and uh, the, the first Chern class clearly maps to the, 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 the Bochern first Chern class maps to the the usual first chunk class, because they're defined by the same, the class of the same object. And one can also take uh, Bochern classes, not just of X, but which would mean KX um, plus or minus, but of an arbitrary holomorphic line bundle. Namely, if you have a holomorphic line bundle, you can pick any smooth Hermitian metric H on the line bundle. And again, you can define the curvature form locally. Locally, H becomes a smooth positive function and you take IDD bar log minus, and you obtain the curvature form, which is a global closed real one one form. And again, if you take two different metrics, the difference of these curvature forms is, is the globally DD bar exact, a nice typo here. So you obtain uh, the first, first Bochern class of the line bundle L in the same Bochern cohomology. And then when you take L to be the anti canonical bundle, you obtain the previous one. And uh, there's a simple exact sequence uh, that relates. So here, pick X is the PCR group. So the, the uh, isomorphism classes of holomorphic line bundles. This is the map we just defined in Bochern cohomology. And then here you have uh, H1 and H2 with the S1 coefficients. So R mod Z is just a circle. And this, this is injective. So you, you have this exact sequence here. Uh, so in particular, you can see the kernel so line bundles here, which map to zero under this first Bochern class, come from this, which is classically a space of flat line bundles. I mean, really Hermitian flat line bundles, as we will see. Okay, so now come my main definition. Uh, perhaps this is not a very good way of phrasing it. Um, so a non-Kehler Calabi manifold in this talk will be a compact complex 
non-killer manifold with first churn class vanishing in the spot churn cohomology. So um, in fact, I will most of the time not assume non-killer. So I won't call them non-killer KBLs, but I will just call them manifolds with vanishing for spot churn class. So the killer ones are also interesting, but they are the same as the usual Karabiaus. And then I'm, I'm adding these non-killer ones with this definition. So um, as I hinted uh, in the previous slide, uh, one can think of this condition of the vanishing of the first class equivalently as saying that the canonical bundle of X admits a, a flat Hermitian metric. So a Hermitian metric whose curvature RH is zero. So that's, that's the condition that I want to put. And uh, this class of manifolds here was first studied by Kodaira when n is equal to two explicitly in one of his papers on, on the classification of surfaces, paper number two in American Journal. So here is a nice screenshot of Kodaira's paper. He called them uh, volume preserving complex structures. Um, so he gives the general definition and then he rephrases it exactly by saying that you have a Hermitian metric on, on Kx whose curvature is zero. So, or if you want tra transition functions are values in the circle uh, S1, R mod C here. All right, I mean, he does more, but I'll tell you later what he does with this. <laughs> um, so uh, first of all, uh, so we define it, we define this class of non-killer Calabiaus, and there's a trivial observation that if you have a compact complex manifold, maybe not Kähler with the, the canonical bundle torsion, the condition in the first slide, then uh, it is it does have vanishing for Spotchen class simply because I mean it's the minus the one of the canonical, and then uh, this is the uh, one over L, the one of the canonical to the L, and now this is assumed to be trivial, and the first chain class of the trivial is zero. So having torsion canonical bundle uh, implies vanishing for spot chain class. In particular, if it's not Kähler with torsion canonical bundle, then those are examples of non-Kähler Calabi-Haus. And here are examples of compact complex manifolds, non-Kähler with a torsion or trivial canonical bundle. There are many, many more examples, but these are some of the easiest one to fit in one slide. So uh, again, possibly the first examples were, were considered by H.C. Wang in the 50s. Uh, these are uh, quotients of a non-abelian complexly group G modular discrete subgroup gamma, which uh, therefore acts, say, by left multiplication. So these are uh, what's called complex parallelizable manifolds. So that's the, the main theorem of this paper, that complex parallelizable are exactly those of this form. Uh, of course, without the assumption of non-abelian, but if it's abelian, uh, you just get a torus, and those are Kähler. And when, they're, when the group is non-abelian, these are non-Kähler. And uh, uh, so these complex non-Kähler complex manifolds, and they even have trivial holomorphic tangent bundle. So the canonical bundle is also trivial. So these are examples. And more, definitely more interesting is when you take a, a, still a quotient G more gamma, but now G is a nilpotent real Lie group, again, non-abelian to avoid the killer case, uh, which has a left invariant complex structure. And again, gamma is a discrete subgroup. So these are uh, complex nil manifolds. And uh, the canonical bundle is trivial. This is not obvious. So, uh, so I found this in papers by Cavalcanti, Gualtieri, and Barberis, Dotti, Verbitsky in the early 2000s. So they are also non-killer Calabi-Haus. And uh, um, when n is equal to two, uh, non-killer calabi were classified in the paper by Kodaira that I showed earlier. And they are exactly what we now call Kodaira surfaces. <laughs> so these are uh, primary and secondary Kodaira surfaces. The primary Kodaira surfaces are elliptic bundles over an elliptic curve with total space that has Betty number B1 equals to three. And the secondary Kodaira are finite quotients of the, of the primary Kodaira. And these are in fact the solved manifolds as was realized later. They can also be written as G mod gamma where G is solvable. Um, uh, so there's again, a totally different source of examples which comes from physics. Uh, perhaps they will mention in another one of the talks. Uh, so these, uh, are uh, there exists non-Kähler Calabi-Haus, in fact, with trivial canonical bundle, 
diffeomorphic to a connected sums of S3 cross S3 for all K two or more. Uh, K equals one doesn't work, <laughs> so it cannot work. They were constructed by Bob Friedman and then Liu and Tien. Uh, they're obtained by a conifold transition from killer Calabi-Yau threefolds by contracting some uh, rational curves and then to a singular, to obtain a singular space and then uh, deforming, smoothing to, to, to a smooth non-killer Calabi-Yau. And uh, there are also uh, non-killer Calabi-Yau manifolds that are holomorphic symplectic. So it, they have a holomorphic symplectic form, in particular, again, the canonical bundle is trivial. And uh, uh, the first examples were constructed by Daniel Guan. And then later other examples are uh, obtained, in fact, are birational to, to hyperkähler manifolds via so-called Mukai flops. You can find some explicit examples by Yoshioka. Okay. So uh, what are some simple properties of non kähler Calabias? Uh, first of all, <laughs> just take the definition. The fact that the first chain class vanishes in bot chain cohomology means I take any Hermitian metric omega, I compute the Ricci form, this is DT bar exact. Right, so that's the definition. Uh, now, as somebody quickly realized, if I take this function f, which is anyway unique up to a constant, uh, and uh, I perform a conformal rescaling, I take a new Hermitian metric, which is e to the f over n times omega, then it's pretty clear that the, the chern ricci form of this Hermit conformally rescaled metric will be zero. So uh, on these non killer clavi house, by Conformal rescaling, I obtain Chern Ricci flat Hermitian metrics. These are Hermitian metrics whose Chern Ricci form, or this Ricci first Chern form, vanishes identically. And again, as in the as in the killer case, one can char characterize this condition of Chern Ricci flatness for Hermitian metrics by in terms of the holonomy, restricted holonomy of the Chern connection, which again is contained in SUN. So these metrics uh, have a little interest. Um, unfortunately, uh, you can see that if the complex dimension is two or more, even if I start with a killer metric omega, so my manifold is actually Calabi in the usual sense, and I perform this trick, then uh, the conformally rescaled metric is never going to be killer unless f was already constant. And so your original metric was already rich flat. So you cannot use this stupid trick to, to prove the calabi theorem in dimensions two or higher, because this conformal scaling never produces killer metrics if you start from a killer metric, unless you're just really scaling by a constant. All right, so that's not good. And uh, um, another bad news is that uh, if you have a, a Hermitian metric with this Chern Ricci vanishing, then the Bochner argument that I mentioned before fails mostly. Since for most of these holomorphic tensors that you would like to prove are parallel, the, the, the curvature that comes out in the Bochner formula is not the this Chern Ricci that you have here. So the fact that it vanishes doesn't immediately help you unless the metric is scalar, in which case it is the same. However, um, the, the Buckner formula, Buckner method works for, oops, for sections of, of the canonical bundle and its tensor powers, since uh, only the trace, some kind of churn scalar curvature arises, which does vanish uh, for these metrics. So uh, that's the following proposition, the Buckner technique. If you have a, a non kähler Calabia manifold, well, it doesn't even have to be non kähler a compact complex manifold with vanishing first portion class. And uh, uh, if you have a non-trivial section of some tensor power of the canonical bundle, kx to the l, l can be any integer non-zero, then kx to the l is trivial. And indeed, uh, as I promised, you apply the Bochner method. So you pick any Hermitian metric with chern ricci curvature zero, for example, this conformally rescaled one, and pick a section eta in this group and compute the, La the complex Laplacian of the pointwise norm of, of eta squared with respect to G is the Hermitian metric of omega. So this is this G upper IJ bar, D I D J bar, the complex Laplacian. You just compute and you get uh, this uh, um, norm squared of the nabla eta. And then the, the curvature term, so you get a multiple of the length of eta squared times the trace of a Chern-Ricci curvature. So this drops out. 
And uh, so you just get this uh, Nabla eta square, which is, has a sign. The manifold is compact. So Laplacian of a function is non-negative. The strong maximum principle shows that this function is constant. So the Laplacian is actually zero, which means that Nabla eta is zero. And therefore, since eta was non-trivial, then eta can never vanish. And uh, so it gives you a trivialization of this line bundle. All right, so this shows that um, uh, these non-killer Calabria manifolds uh, sometimes have torsion canonical bundle if there is some, some pluricanonical or pluri-anticanonical section. So an obvious question that comes up then is, does this always hold? So if I have a compact complex manifold with vanishing first Bochan class, do we always have the, the canonical bundle extortion? So as I said earlier, I will repeat in the next slide. In the killer case, the answer is yes, by this Bogomolov Fujiki Lieberman. It's also a consequence of the Boville Bogomolov decomposition theorem. Um, but uh, so if you want, it's only meaningful for, it's only non obvious for non killer Calabria manifolds. And uh, um, here are some uh, either simple or uh, long known facts about that. So uh, it's the following theorem. If you have a compact complex manifold with vanity first Bochan class, then uh, the canonical bundle is torsion uh, holomorphically provided any of the following four condition holds. Number one is what we just discussed. You have some, some non-trivial section for some power. Number two is uh, in complex dimension two. So for, for compact complex surfaces, that is true. Number three is actually also already discussed in the Keller case. And number four is if the first Betty number of X vanishes. So number, as I said, A and C were already discussed. B is another screenshot of, of uh, Kodaira's paper, that same paper, which proves exactly what I said. Uh, every surface with a volume preserving complex structure is a finite ramified normal cover which whose canonical bundle is trivial. And this is not, not a trivial theorem at all. Uh, and one can also give more, more modern proofs of this, but they all use machinery. So there's no, there's no way to do it. I think actually the, the proof of Kodaira is in some sense the most elementary one. And uh, so part D is the only one that I will actually discuss. Uh, it's actually a result of a Schiffman, some kind of lemma in one of his old papers. Uh, namely, you go back to the exact sequence that I had before. Uh, by assumption kx, the first Bochan class is zero. So from the exact sequence, it comes actually from this uh, cohomology H1 of R mod Z coefficients. Now you use the universal coefficient theorem. This is home from homology with Z coefficient into the, into the circle. Now you use the assumption, right? B1 is zero. So this homology here uh, with Z coefficient is actually a finite abelian group. And home uh, from a finite abelian group into the circle is uh, isomorphic to, uh, to the finite abelian group that you have here. Um, and so this is finite. And so, so Kx was coming from here, but this is a finite group. So you pass to some finite multiple and you have the trivial line bundle. So this definitely fails when B1 is larger, right? Here, you would have a, not just a finite group, but also some, some Z to some rank R and that, that, that gives you here a, a, sort of a torus, right? R, R mod Z to the R. And then in the torus, unfortunately, uh, not all points are a torsion. So, so this is needed here. And uh, uh, I have to say, there cannot be a talk about non-killer compact manifold that doesn't mention the six sphere. So here goes. So um, let's take X to be a compact complex manifold of three dimensions, different morphic to six, if it exists. Uh, I, I will not comment on, on the existence or non-existence. Then I claim that uh, it cannot be a non-killer Calabria or manifold. Uh, well, first of all, uh, assume that it was. So B1 is zero here. So you can apply the previous Schiffman lemma. You do obtain that the canonical bundle distortion. Uh, but then you look at the usual exponential exact sequence. Uh, <coughs> and uh, there's a, there are two terms, H1 of XZ and H2 of X and Z, which vanish uh, for S6. So you see that Picard is actually isomorphic to H1 of OX. And this guy is torsion free, the, the one on the right. So there is no torsion. So the canonical actually has to be trivial. And now that the canonical is trivial, this is an old argument of Alfred Gray, 
right? So you have another vanishing holomorphic three form omega. Uh, it's obviously closed because we are, it's a three zero form on a three fold. And so it has to be exact because the cohomology H3 vanishes. And now that it's exact, you integrate it with your conjugate with the correct coefficient. So that it's strictly positive on the one hand, uh, but on the other hand, by Stokes is zero, so contradiction, right? I mean, just to say that if you like to ponder about the sixth sphere, it's not gonna be one of the manifolds we've been discussing about. Uh, instead, something more interesting, um, I proved this was a few years ago that uh, actually you do have, again, distortion property for non kira Calabiaos, which are in the Fujiki class C. So these are the ones that are dominated by Kieler manifold or equivalently by Baruchas that they are uh, bimeromorphic to a Kieler manifold. And the proof uh, uses some big guns, but otherwise it's not too complicated, modulo those. So I can give you a quick, quick, uh, quick proof. So by Deline, Griffiths, Morgan, Sullivan, uh, since it's in class C, it satisfies the Didi bar lemma. So in particular, this vanishing in the first Bachchan class is the same as vanishing of the usual churn class, uh, first churn class. As I said, by Varushas, one of the equivalent definitions of class C is that you have a sequence of blow-ups with smooth centers so, so that the total space is scalar. So this is also using Hironaka's famous resolution. And uh, it follows from this definition of blow-ups with smooth centers and everything is smooth, X and X tilde, that the relative canonical bundle is actually an effective divisor upstairs. So you have uh, some section of the canonical bundle upstairs tensor with F, where F just is the, the pullback of the anti-canonical bundle downstairs. And uh, uh, by this uh, assumption of vanishing for the Bochan class, which is the same as vanishing of the usual Chern class, you have the, the, the usual that F has first Chern class zero. Right, so what this means, it means that this blow up X uh, has a numerical canonical divisor, they, what they call it. So uh, not clear whether KX tilde has a section, but if I tensor it with something that's numerically trivial with vanishing first chain class, then you get a section. So this can be studied by, a, by now classical technique uh, by I think it was green Lazarsfeld, and then there's a key result by Simpson here. So to look at the so-called cohomology jump loci, so you look at uh, this S, all the line bundles uh, with the pick zero is just the ones whose first chain class vanishes. Upstairs, whose top cohomology is n is a dimension uh, is non-zero. So has oh, it's, sorry, there's there's a dimension missing here. The dimension is at least one, or the cohomology is non-zero. By circularity. That's the same as uh, H0 of Kx tensor L dual. So that means that our line bundle F, the pullback of anti-canonical, lies in the dual of this cohomology jump loss AS, denoted by S dual. All right. Now, what Simpson proves in the projective case and, and more recently, Boton one uh, extended to the Keller case is that uh, these uh, cohomology jump loss I in greater generality, in particular this one, uh, is a, a torsion translate of subtori. So you have uh, finitely many torsion elements in peak zero, so line bundles which are torsion in the Picara upstairs, and then some subtori of your peak zero, such that S is just a union of these translates. All right. But then if if uh, if S is a union of translates, when you take the dual, the, the S dual is also a union of translates by the, the dual torsion line bundles here. And, uh, and what we have is that F is in S dual. And if you play these two one against the other, you can easily write F as an element in S tensor with a torsion line bundle, right? Just from this description of these two. So F is in the second one. So this T is torsion, say that the order is L. And then uh, since L is in S, that means that you have a non-zero section of this uh, uh, Kx tilde tensor L dual. And then if you tensor L power, you still have a non-zero section. And I tensor with the, this uh, L large enough, I mean, L the order of this, uh, of this T, so that here I have equality, the T has disappeared. All right, so I obtain 
up to raising to this power L, I obtain a section of Kx tilde tensor F dual up to raising. But I already had a section of Kx tensor F, which I can also raise to the power L. So this and this both have a non-zero section. And if I tensor them together, the F dual and the F cancel, and I obtain a not an honest 2L canonical form upstairs. So I obtained that the 2L pluri upstairs is non-zero, but that's a birational, a bimeromorphic invariant. So you obtain that the, there is actually a section of Kx to 2L on your original uh, class C manifold. And now you're done because you, you, you apply the Schiffman, uh, Schiffman remark from lemma from before. Uh, no, sorry, not the Schiffman, the, the Bachner technique one, right? So you have a non-killer Calabiao uh, with, the, with the, some non-trivial pluricanonical section, and so the canonical must be torsion. So the Bachner argument. All right. Um, however, uh, sorry, maybe I'll go back here. So these are all kind of positive answers to this question under extra assumptions, right? But in fact, the, the answer to this question is no in general. So here is a counterexample. <laughs> so it's all good and well with those assumptions, but if you don't make any assumption, it doesn't work. So there are non-killer Calabia manifolds uh, with canonical bundle non-torsion. So the examples can be found way back. This is, they already appear in the original paper of Bogomolov and book by Weno, uh, but they didn't really talk about non killer Calabiao. So the, the observation that they do satisfy that is due to Gunnar Magnusson, who is a student of Demai. So I can describe them for you. You start with a killer Calabia Y with trivial canonical bundle, and you assume that you have an automorphism of Y, which pulls back, this is a, a fixed trivialization of KY, a never vanishing holomorphic N form. You assume that it's pulled back, well, it's always pulled back to a multiple of itself, and the multiple always has modulus one, but you assume that it's not a root of unity. So I will justify this assumption in the next slide. For now, assume you have found a Calabiao, with this automorphism such that when you when you pull back the, the killer the the holomorphic n form it's rotated by something of modulus one but not not of finite order right so if you do that then you can form this so-called suspension space so you take the elliptic curve z generated by uh, by one and tau and take the product of this Calabiao cross the elliptic curve and you mod out by a z, z squared action where uh, one generator just uh, acts uh, trivially on the elliptic curve by translation by one and does nothing on y. And the other generator uh, translates by tau on the elliptic curve and applies this automorphism. So you, you can just think of this as the, the, the suspension or mapping, mapping uh, cylinder, I think it's called, mapping cylinder of f uh, in one direction and then the identity in the other direction. So what you obtain, this X is easily seen to be a compact complex manifold. <clears throat> it fibers uh, over uh, this uh, elliptic curve. And uh, uh, that's not important. So on the other hand, you can write down uh, 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 Ricci flat volume form. So if I take I to the N omega wedge omega bar wedge, this is just Euclidean, I dz wedge dz bar, Euclidean metric on the elliptic curve, then this, is easily seen to be invariant under the z-squared action. So it descends to a volume form on x uh, whose IDD bar log is zero. So that's a Ricci flat volume form. Or you can think of this as a metric on Kx or a Kx dual with, the, with the zero curvature. So this shows that canonical is Hermitian flat. This was a Gunnar's observation. On the other hand, uh, what's proved in this uh, Bokomolov and Bueno is that uh, there are no no global sections for any power of kx to the l positive power. So, so there's no way that the canonical bundle is torsion. So this manifold has Cotera dimension minus infinity. And the proof is again easy. Suppose you have a section of some kx to the l, pull it back to y cross e, and there you can compare it with the explicit one, omega wedge dz tensor l. So on the product, it just comes out to be a holomorphic function times this. And because y is compact, this holomorphic function only depends on, on z. And uh, the, the, so this, sorry, this is, uh, it should be pulled back to y cross c. <laughs> Anyways, so, uh, and then you, you apply the, 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 
z2 square invariants, and you see you have these identities from which f of z or f of z plus one are equal, and f of z plus tau isn't quite equal, but it gets rescaled by lambda to the L. So that implies when you take a modulus, since lambda has modulus one, actually the modulus and moduli are the same. So f is holomorphic on c and bounded, and therefore is constant. And once f is constant, you get that lambda to the L is one. So lambda was actually a root of unity, and that's contrary to what we assumed. So, so these are examples. And how do you find these automorphisms? There are many ways to find them. The most elementary one is to take y to be a torus. So this construction was done by Yoshihara. You take uh, two solutions, alpha and beta, of this quadratic <laughs> here. They're complex numbers. And you can easily prove with some uh, basic algebra <laughs> that uh, alpha times beta conjugate is not a root of unity. And the uh, alpha and beta bar satisfy this uh, integral, sorry, this equals zero, <laughs> this, the, the roots of this polynomial with z coefficients. And then you can uh, take a lattice then in C2, spanned by alpha to the power j, comma beta to the beta conjugate to the power j, j from zero to three. So these are four vectors in C2. Uh, you can easily see that they span a lattice. And the automorphism f is induced by the, the diagonal map of C2 alpha and beta conjugate. So this defines an automorphism of this torus. And uh, uh, if you pull back the holomorphic two form, dz1, which is dz2, uh, you see that you get this coefficient alpha times beta bar, which is not a root of unity as proved earlier. So this is one, one example. There are many other examples on other tori. There are also examples on K3 surfaces and hyperkähler manifolds. In fact, uh, these uh, automorphisms of K3 with the infinite order uh, have often extremely interesting properties from the point of view of dynamical systems. So um, here, are, uh, the talk is not over. There's one more section. But this is a summary of uh, the kind of generally, it's not summary, uh, further questions and remarks about what else, what else of the first slide or second slide can one generalize? So for this discussion here, X will be again, compare complex with the first portion class zero and you can assume non-Kähler. So non-Kähler Calabria manifold with my definition. So the first question that I don't know the answer to is uh, do all sufficiently small deformation still satisfy uh, that they are non-Kähler Calabria so the, the, the first portion class vanishes? So um, it's easy to see that the answer is yes, if you make some extra assumptions, for example, assuming that the, the Hodge number H01 is equal to the, sorry, there's a, again a typo, there's a factor of two here missing. So uh, B1 should be two H01. Uh, for T sufficiently small, you don't even need to assume it at zero. In fact, one can see that if you assume this equality at zero, it implies the one, this equality for t small enough, but you don't have to assume it at zero. In any case, if you assume this, you, that's true. Uh, but on the other hand, it's also classically known that uh, if you have a compact complex manifold with kx torsion or trivial, uh, small deformations do not have kx torsion or trivial in general. But that doesn't rule out this question. So it may, may well be true, but the fact that I couldn't prove it uh, with, so, so it's either trivial and I, I don't think it is, or otherwise it's most likely false, let's put it this way. So, so I think it's just about finding a counterexample, um, but I, I couldn't see it. So um, another interesting question is on this non killer Calabria manifolds are holomorphic tensors parallel with respect to the, the churn connection of a churn rich flat metric? Uh, or if you don't want to mention churn connections, you can say that uh, if, if they vanish at one point, are they identically zero, these kind of questions. Um, again, I don't see how to do this. Uh, the Bochner method, apart from the, the cases that we discussed, has another rich curvature that enters, so it doesn't work, um, which hints that it's false, but it's not so easy to find a counterexample that this is not to me. So you can, you can give it a try. Um, on the negative side, it is known that uh, the bogomolov todorov theorem does not hold. The deformations can be obstructed even on 
complex parallelizable nil manifolds by Zonke or Lenske. So these even have uh, tangent bundle trivial. So the 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 BTT does not hold. Oops, sorry, I, I pushed my mistake. Um, the polystability of the tangent bundle of Calabi-Yaus also fails uh, already in dimension two. One can check, for example, the primary Kodaira surfaces. They have uh, first chain class zero and second chain class also zero. So if you had this polystability, uh, then uh, you could find a Hermitian-Einstein, a Hermitian-Yang-Mills metric. And then you would have the Lübcke chain number inequality, which is a close cousin of the Miyoka yao and uh, by this zero here, you would actually have equality in the loop inequality, which implies that it would be projectively flat. And then uh, as shown by uh, Li Yao Zheng, I think they, they quote a Godushan and Fried, this implies that it would have to be finally covered by a torus or a Hopf surface, and it is not. So, so this shows that um, the tangent bundle is not gonna be polystable with respect to all Godushan metrics. So here there are no Keller metrics, but you can still talk about stability with respect to Godushan metrics. Uh, so that's not true. And it also shows that you, you cannot find on non Keller Calabio manifolds in general, you cannot find Hermitian metrics whose other Ricci curvature vanishes. There's a second Chan Ricci. There's also a third, <laughs> but the, the second one is the one that comes from in this Hermitian Einstein and you cannot find that. So you can find first Chan Ricci so what I've been discussing equal to zero, but not, not this one. Um, uh, another interesting question is the Calabi decomposition theorem. So this was studied very recently by Antes Cattaneo, Rolenski, and Tomassini. So they proved, first of all, they observed that, uh, again, in general, it fails, uh, even if you assume the canonical bundle is trivial. But it, it may hold uh, when x is in class C. So when it's bimeromorphic to Kähler, they obtain uh, the first uh, partial results in the right direction for the structure of the Albanese map. Um, so quite possibly something can be proved. And similarly for a bogomolo boville the, 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 the more refined statement, again, if this one fails, this one fails even more. But if you assume class C, uh, it's possible that it may hold in some form. For example, Fujiki many years ago has conjectured that uh, this factor, if you assume that it's, you know, that it's simply connected, assume that, uh, then it should split into the same product as the Keller case, allowing also some new factor, which would be Moishe's on with H to zero equal to zero. So I don't, I don't know any progress towards this, but it's quite possible that one can prove something under this class C assumption. Right, so now we get to the last uh, uh, topic, which is what happens to the Calabio theorem itself. So I've been discussing these kind of consequences that classically are usually proved using Calabia, sometimes at least, uh, but how about the Calabia theorem itself? So, so far I've only said something about the, the conformal rescaling, which I can here restate. So uh, for to fit some notation, we don't even as, need to assume vanishing friction class for now. So X will be a compact complex manifold. Let's call uh, R the set of closed real one one forms that represent the first churn class, bot churn class of X. So that's just a set of one one forms. So one has the following trivial Calabiao theorem because it really is trivial. <laughs> if you have a compact Hermitian manifold uh, and you look at the, the map that takes a Hermitian metric and maps it to its first chain form, a return rich form, rich, then this map gives you a bijection from the space of Hermitian metrics conformal to omega modulo rescalings uh, to R. So it's perfectly bijective map, and you can compare this with the actual Calabia theorem in the Keller case, which can be stated in a vaguely similar way. The, for Keller matrix homologous to omega, the, the chan ricci map form map is also a bijection. So this is a very hard theorem. This is essentially trivial. I already gave you the proof uh, of the surjectivity earlier by just conformally, and the, the injectivity is a very simple uh, maximum principle argument. So this theorem is not interesting. Um, but one can try to find some more interesting versions of this theorem for uh, special classes of Hermitian metrics. So uh, again, I don't need Karabiao on this slide. Uh, X would be an n-dimensional compact complex manifold. Omega Hermitian metric 
is called Godouchon if uh, dd bar of omega to the n minus one vanishes, and these always exist by a famous result of Godouchon. Uh, and uh, uh, there here is a bunch of other conditions, and there are many more that one can put. So I just made a small selection. Uh, there's a strengthening called strongly Godouchon in the, introduced by Popovici. That is the d bar of omega minus one instead of being del closed is assumed to be del exact. And I should say right away that all of the remaining conditions are in general obstructed. So they don't always exist. The only one that always exists is the first one, but that they sometimes exist. Uh, the second, the third is the condition called balanced or semicalar that the omega to the n minus one is declosed. This was not introduced by Michelson, it was studied before by many people, but Michelson, I think, had the first seminal paper devoted only to this. Um, pluriclosed, also called strongly scalar with torsion, if dd bar of omega is zero. I, I didn't put here, I mean, this appeared in the physics literature, but I'm sure it was also studied earlier by geometers. Um, and uh, a stenocalar is a condition introduced by Yost and Yao that came out small, as a nice technical assumption in one of the results. It's a similar to Godouchon, but it's dd bar of omega to the n minus two equals to zero. And one can put more. So some examples of these, uh, well, you can look, for example, at the hop surface, the standard hop surface. And uh, this, uh, in fact, a conformally Euclidean metric is in fact Godouchon, as so I can compute. Or the calabi ekman one of the calabi ekman manifolds, this one is diffeomorphic to S3 cross S3. Uh, and again, one can take essentially two copies of this in some naive sense. And uh, this is uh, actually now pluriclosed and uh, also therefore a stenocalar because this X would be a threefold. And an example of balanced, the simplest one, non kaler is to take the Iwasawa manifold uh, and take this uh, invariant uh, metric here. The X dy and the Z minus X dy are a frame of left invariant uh, holomorphic one forms. And this is balanced. And none of these are kaler. So uh, we now get to the final points. So there are actually calabi -Yau theorems that are more similar to the original version of Yao that I proved with Ben Weinkov a few years ago. Uh, the first one is really the literal translation of the Yao's theorem. Uh, once you replace the cohomology class by this omega plus dd bar phi, since you don't have a dd bar lemma in general, and otherwise the statement is exactly the same without Kähler assumption. So if you look at Hermitian metrics, omega plus dd bar phi, then the, the Chan-Ricci map is a bijection to this set R. And um, later we looked at, at uh, this other condition which came up in the work of uh, Fu, Wang, and Wu, uh, where you fix another Hermitian metric omega zero, which may be equal to omega or not. And you look at Hermitian metrics whose n minus one power is equal to this. So omega to the n minus one plus IDD bar phi wedge omega zero to the n minus two. So this, um, it turns out that this n minus one power is a bijection on positive forms. So specifying a Hermitian metric or specifying its n minus one power are the same thing. And again, the chern map is a bijection as well. That's what we proved. And this is equivalent, both of these are equivalent to solving a Monchamper type equation where omega tilde is either this or the n minus one root of this equals to uh, some prescribed volume form e to the f plus b omega to the n, f is a given smooth function and b some real number that you need to find. So it's essentially solving a Monchamper equation or a Monchamper equation for n minus one and minus one form on a compact Hermitian manifold without Kähler assumptions. And there is yet one more version before I get to applications of this or corollaries, uh, which we solved with Gabor Sekehidi two, days, two years later, um, which as uh, some modification of the previous one, you add this term here, <laughs> otherwise the theorem looks the same. Uh, you add this uh, real part of i d phi, which d bar omega zero and minus two. And again, it's a bijection. But now the point is, as was observed by Popovici and also by Ben and myself, that uh, by adding this term, if omega is Godouchon, this new Hermitian metric here, the root of this is also Godouchon which wasn't true in the previous slide in general. So uh, this shows in particular that if you take the image under this chern ritchie form map of the space of all Godouchon metrics on X, you get all possible representatives of the first class. And this was a conjecture of Godouchon. 
So, so to obtain his conjecture, we had to add this term here. Uh, and in particular, if you apply this last remark in the case of non killer Calabiaus, you see that every non killer Calabiaus manifold admits Godushon metrics that are also chan ricci flat at the same time. So that's, that's a corollary of this, this theorem here. Uh, on the other hand, uh, another corollary, if you have a non killer Calabiaus that admits a pluriclosed or a strongly Godushon metric, and now these are assu extra assumptions because, as I said, they don't exist in general, then you can also find good pluriclosed or respectively strongly Godushon chan ricci flat metrics. And the reason for pluriclosed, you just apply uh, this first theorem here, because if, if dd bar of omega is zero, then clearly dd bar of this omega plus dd bar phi is also zero. And for the second theorem, uh, the strongly Godushon, you apply again this, uh, this one with Gabor. So you do have uh, some analogs of the Calabria theorem for Godushon metrics, pluriclosed and strongly Godushon. And uh, the, the last, Thing I want to ask is, I mean, actually, it's, it's a well-known conjecture in the field. It was certainly explicitly formulated by Fu Wang Wu, Fu Xiao, Popovici. I think Yao also mentioned this in, in, in words. So that if you have a compact complex manifold with a balance metric, then uh, every closed real Bowman form uh, in the first Bachchan class of X can be obtained as the Ricci first chan form of some balanced metric. So the same statement as the Godushon conjecture, but with the assumption that you have a balanced metric. And a special case, which already will be interesting to me, is if you assume there is no killer Calabiao, which admits a balanced metric, then uh, you just want to obtain the element zero in here. Namely, there exists a churn ricci flat balanced metric. And these metrics are, uh, in fact, also bismuth ricci flat. This is the bismuth connection with the skew-symmetric torsion. Uh, and uh, that's quite interesting for mathematical physics. And there are examples uh, that satisfy this lower conjecture, which are these conifold transitions. Uh, the, the existence of balanced metrics was obtained by Fuli Yao. So on these, we do not know the existence of this Chan Ricci slash Bismuth Ricci flat balanced metrics. So this would be a, a very interesting result. And uh, uh, the only partial result in general that we have is that the conjectures are true if X admits an asteno killer metric. So uh, these asteno killer are not very friendly. So uh, it's hard to really to, 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 to construct these examples. Um, there are actually examples of compact complex manifold that admit balanced and asteno killer. These were found by Fino, Grancharov, Vezzoni, and uh, La Torre Ugarte recently. But uh, um, so this assumption sh clearly is, sh should go, should be eliminated. And th the problem is that. In general, if you remove that assumption, it's, it's not clear even what, what PDE one, one could, could try to solve to, to find these metrics. So um, yeah, I think this is all I wanted to say for today. So I was told to remind you that uh, there will be an this online discussion on Jitter that you can join uh, from the release of this video on. And then there will be a Zoom coffee break on February 10th that you're welcome to join. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. Oh, stop.